I just thought I'd jump on quickly and give you a real overview of um, what I'm observing when I look at, at bowlers. Um, and primarily, I want to know what direction the bowler is moving in from the run up through the crease and in the follow through. Um, real basic stuff. Um, but it's the basics that will provide consistency. Um, and so when I'm looking at this bowler here, I'm noticing the direction he's running in is pretty good. It's at the target, at the target, at the target. And then I just see, when you look closely, a little shift in direction. And I think it's because, have a look at that right foot. It's now pointing towards kind of fine leg there. So it's no longer directly at the target. Okay. And, and the effect that has is it's just closed his hips off a little bit. So he's now running in a different direction, effectively. And there's going to be a consequence because of that. And so the consequence is down the line, you see his left foot. It's gone across his body. Um, and from here, the consequence of his left foot going across his body is that his left foot and leg have now got to sweep back across him to get to get him back on line with a target because he still wants to bowl the ball straight or threaten the stumps or whatever. Uh, but there's compensations being made all the way through simply because of a slight change of direction. All right. So we can see the effect. He's shifting direction. His arms are doing this. Um, we can see the effect, but what is the cause of all of this? That he's having to work really hard to get back online with a target. This magic moment here, point of release. Ideally, I put in a previous post that that point of release needs to be ideally below, or sorry, above his feet. That's clearly not the case here. And it's all because a slight shift of direction. Then him having to work really hard to get back on line with a target. His seam position is actually really good considering where his point of release is. However, um, you then have to weigh up. Is that point of release going to hit the string of the seam consistently? Um, so that's the performance the performance side of things. And the other thing you have to weigh up is the health of the bowler. So is this action healthy? We know um, that um, it, side crunch, too much side crunch causes problems. Um, so that's what I look at, real basic stuff. Um, and then if I was working with this bowler on an ongoing basis, I'd take into account all of those observations and then pick out the bits that I felt was the most important just to tidy up um, to get more momentum moving at the target for longer through the crease.